Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss another level of the Brexit food shortages that are starting to hit the national media. In this case, a major supermarket filling the space that used to be occupied with fresh fruit and vegetables with a printed cardboard cutout of the food that used to be there. It's like they're thinking, oh yeah, we're denying them this food now, that's a bit of a shame. Let's put up a photo to remind them what food used to look like. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So we've already been told by the government and, and various Brexiteers that the food shortages, which we are now permanently suffering and which are set to get worse yet, are worth it because we now have sovereignty. Now, I know I've poured scorn on the notion of Brexit benefits in the past, largely because the government have yet to name one that is actually true. But I suppose there are always opportunities in every mess. You know, I've already said that professional chefs who might be struggling to get staff for their restaurants have a potential opportunity for a new market. Recipe books on how to cook all this sovereignty that we now have instead of food. But now it seems there may be a follow-up book required as well, how to cook cardboard vegetables. Now this phenomenon is nothing new. I've seen them about myself and have seen people posting photos like this for a while now. But this is the first mention I've seen in the national media, suggesting that it is becoming more widespread. See, what happened at first was shortages began, uh, supermarkets would fill up the empty baskets and shelves with something else. So you'd have a load of mushrooms in like the berries section or carrots where there used to be oranges, something like that. Basically, covering for shortages by putting out what you had plenty of. Because the shortages weren't across the board. So what they had, you know, what, what shortages they had in some products, there'll be other products they had lots of, they just hide it with those. Then this became difficult as there were fewer and fewer products in plenty. You know, I've seen all sorts of weird attempts to hide the shortages, putting red wine in a refrigerated cabinet that usually has chicken, Pringles in the fizzy drink section, as well as in the crisp section, they haven't just moved it, it's just like, more Pringles, put the Pringles out. But then supermarkets just started giving up and ordered cardboard cutouts of the fruit and veg that was proving tricky to stock. But obviously, like most people, I can only see snippets of this picture, no pun intended. I can see what my local supermarkets are like. I can see reports from people around the country, of course, but all very anecdotal, albeit with photographic evidence. But in the absence of a government willing to tell the truth about the extent of the problems, we have to wait for the national media to catch up. For example, I just went to my local Tesco this week and, and this area and Tesco in general is not especially hard hit either. You know, they have a lot of money to be prioritized for deliveries and where I am is there's a lot of major distribution routes here. So it's relatively low level. But even here, the shortages are there and they continue. Uh, the cardboard image of prepared salad empty crates and these shelves used to be full of produce it's not just like oh that's at the top no they used to have stuff on them wine moved to one of the shelves in the pork and poultry section although it's at least white wine this time not like when morrison's put red wine up when they couldn't be asked to do it properly um but the point is that this is not where wine has ever been before you do sometimes get chilled white wine with the prepared meals you know suggested to people oh do you fancy a bottle of wine with that i've never seen it with the raw meat and, and that's new to cover up the permanent shortages. The fish counter, permanently closed now. I wonder if the same is case in the Grimsby Tesco. I might have to check it out at some point. That'd be embarrassing, major fishing port. But all of this is what is happening in my local store. Uh, and by the way, I even saw Pringles in the dog food section today. But I can't know what it's like nationally by going on what's happening in towns around me. So I work on the assumption that given that the national media tend to report these things long after they first emerge, that a decision to finally write something must be an indication that it is both widespread and persistent. In other words, no longer just isolated pockets. And so it was that The Guardian ran an article last week pointing out the printed on cardboard vegetables in Tesco. Also reported that various supermarkets have been closing their food service counters to cut costs. Again, echoing what I've seen locally. And I will say there was another interesting dimension to the article, which I hadn't been aware of previously. It makes sense though. It said that because people were tending to buy things like electrical goods and things like that on online more, supermarkets like Tesco that usually dedicate a large amount of shop floor to non-food goods like these were selling less. 
which has meant having even more room to try and put actual food goods out. Uh, except that's, no, that's not how it's working. Certainly not the case at my local Tesco. They've absolutely reduced the amount of space for electrical goods. I noticed that they moved them, so there's far less. I noticed that a couple of months ago. But it wasn't by expanding the food sections. They didn't, they, they just swapped it with the, the, the food aisles are exactly as they were. They swapped it with the clothes. So it used to be you had the clothes section and then you had your other DVDs and electrical goods and all that sort of stuff. And they've just swapped them around. Uh, and they've massively expanded the, the, the clothes section now. Apparently it's not that hard to get a load of clothes. I can't imagine anything else being done in any other store. At the end of the day, if they're struggling to get food, they're not going to, they're not going to expand their food sections, are they? And I did laugh when they said that cutouts of expensive items like detergents, protein powders and spirits are sometimes used to prevent shoplifting. You know, you put pictures of the items on the shelves and then pick up the actual product at the till. Granted, I've seen this sort of thing being used in the past. I cannot remember the last time I saw it in a shop. Certainly hasn't been for years, but yeah, I've seen this thing before. But it's completely irrelevant to the issue at hand here. That photo of asparagus isn't because thieves were targeting them. I do not believe that in that particular store, you're supposed to go to the till and pick up a pack of asparagus there, along with your mobile top-up card. It's just the latest example of how even large supermarkets with their deep pockets for getting stock that would be much more problematic for a smaller business, have hit a brick wall themselves. You know, news of even more shortages is hitting us all the time. The latest is dried fruit. That could knacker mince pies this Christmas. Hope they still have them at least for this week because it's about time to get the old Christmas cake started now. You know, coming up to the end of October, that's when I tend to start them. Because it turns out that just wishing away the problems doesn't actually make the problems go away. In fact, it just allows more problems to come along to compound the whole thing. And it's worth remembering that although these shortages are driven by Brexit, as they do not exist outside of Britain, these are not the extent of the Brexit shortages that we've been anticipating. These aren't the shortages that we said were always coming. All that's happened so far is that we've told a load of key workers in our food supply chain to bugger off out the country without a plan for replacing them with domestic workers. That's not the full impact of Brexit shortages. The food shortages we feared would be caused by import controls. Right now, we don't have any. Our borders are basically completely open to goods coming in from the EU. Anything could be passing across our borders now. Nobody is checking either the paperwork or the physical goods. We can't. Don't have the staff to do it. Don't have the facilities to do it. We don't have the systems to do it. And when we do have those things, well, we need to train people to use them. But we can't just keep our borders open forever. I used to think Brexit supporters might take exception to the fact that as a result of Brexit, our borders are now weaker than they were as EU members. Turns out they're not that bothered. All of the reasons for Brexit can go and die in a fire as long as they don't have to admit that they were wrong or were lied to. Not quite sure what the next stage is. Boris Johnson was addressing a group of children and he suggested that we should, uh, to rebalance nature, feed human beings to animals. Maybe the step after that is he's going to advocate cannibalism. Not sure. He's certainly generating a lot of supply, isn't he? But, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what the next plan is for supermarkets. And, and, and I'm not quite sure why they who make their money by selling as many products as possible are going along with the delusion, which is restricting their stock. You know, if they want to put cardboard up in the place of food, put up a sign saying this product is no longer readily available as it was for decades of single market membership because of Brexit. If you don't like it, neither do we. Please tell your MP that we are both pissed off about it and do something. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, see you later.